Hello everyone! For developers and technical people, comparing Superbase and Xano doesn't make a lot of sense. It would be more logical to compare Superbase with Firebase, but a lot of non-technical clients come to us and ask if they should use Superbase or Xano for their web app. Superbase is also, as Xano, perceived as a tool that will help you build your project much faster compared to traditional ways of doing software development. So that's where this question and comparison comes from. Superbase and Xano have a lot of things in common, such as both are backend as service tools, both make sure you can develop backend infrastructure faster and easier, they both provide features as authentication, database, uh, file storage, easy creation of APIs, real time out of the box, etc. Both use PostgreSQL as their database, also you don't need to set up hosting, purchase servers and hustle around those things. So these are common things made us set them side by side, and throughout this video we'll compare them on a few points, development speed, when to use each platform, scalability, security, cost, and at the end of the video we'll log into Xano and Superbase and I will show you how both platforms look and we'll go over some options. The main difference between Superbase and Xano is the amount of code that you'll need to write. When doing a web application in Xano, you'll write little to any code for your backend. While Superbase comes with a lot of pre-built features, you'll need to write a lot of code in order to do custom things, which you will definitely need. Xano is a no-code backend tool, and Superbase is not. In order to create an app using Superbase, you have to be proficient at TypeScript and SQL. As you can imagine, because of this, development would be much faster using Xano. But this leads us to conclude that we can't say which tool is better overall, it's hard to tell. The question is more when to use Xano and when to use Superbase. For 90% of our projects that we've built in our agency, Xano was more than sufficient. Xano allows you to create backend logic just by dragging and dropping blocks, which represent basic concepts of programming like inputs, op outputs, variables, conditions, loops, queries, etc. This makes development a lot easier and faster. Xano is the fastest way to build a scalable backend for any software application using no code. So if you're building an app where the important factor is time to market, then Xano is perfect. If you need to push changes and features fast, Xano is a great option. Xano founder is a person who worked at Google and has a deep understanding of how software development works. He wanted to create an easier way of creating complex applications. The only case when you would like to use Superbase is when you have a lot of extremely custom functionalities which require coding. Or if you're concerned about vendor lock-in and if you like the fact that Superbase is open source. And also if the cost of Xano bothers you because the basic Superbase plan is more affordable than Xano basic plan. We can say that both Xano and Superbase are well scalable. If you have a lot of users and you want to scale in Xano, you should switch to scale plan. And in that case, you are on an instance that has dedicated resources, can handle multiple concurrent operations, and has the ability to scale to millions of users. With Xano, it's possible to scale vertically and horizontally. Vertical scaling is when you use scale plan and you increase server resources depending on your needs, and Xano also offers horizontal scaling, which comes with enterprise plan. Xano adds layers of abstraction, so you're a few clicks away from scaling, which makes things much easier and you don't need to worry about what happens with servers and database in the background. You just know that your app can handle a lot of users and that's what's most important. Xano describes their service as serverless-like, meaning that they do auto-scaling or even manual configuration when needed, but without our intervention. On the other hand, we have Superbase, which is open source and more for technical people. There are not many layers of abstraction here. You can have a better control over scaling, but it requires a deeper understanding of IT infrastructure. The ability to self-host Superbase on your own servers gives you even more flexibility and control over vertical and horizontal scaling. But that's for advanced teams who know how scaling works and who are in need of manual and controlled scaling. So to conclude this one, both are very well scalable, but Xano is more for you if you don't want to worry about that part, and Superbase is for you if you want to have full control. Regarding security, both Superbase and Xano are very secure. Xano has more security certifications and it has passed a lot of important security compliances. While security of the platform itself is important, more important factor is security of your app that you build on these platforms. And security of your app is actually dependent on how you build it. Whether you write code in Superbase or you stack blocks in Xano, you need to make sure that you code and build securely. 
Companies that own Superbase and Xano are taking care of their part. Now it's on you and your developers to build secure software. Xano is more expensive than Superbase because you're not paying just for hosting and servers. You're actually paying for all the work they put in to create a no-code backend builder. On the other hand, Superbase is more affordable but also doesn't provide these no-code capabilities like Xano. Basic plan with Superbase is 25 bucks per month and for Xano is 85. The next plan in Superbase is almost 600 while the next plan in Xano is almost 200 but you can scale it to over 1000. It really depends on your app needs which plan to choose. If you have a project idea and you're not sure which platform and plan to get, feel free to reach out to me over email or LinkedIn. Now let's go over the demo. Okay, let's go over the interface first. Uh, here I have Superbase dashboard. I'm in the Super Test project. And on the left side, we will see the main options of Superbase. The most important things are here. So we have database, authentication, storage, edge functions, real time. Database is of course where you can manage all of your project tables. So you can go here, schema visualizer. Here we have just one table, but if you have multiple and if they're connected between, so if they have some relationships, they're going to be connected by lines. So this visual overview is really convenient. And here we have tables. This is a list view of tables. Currently, as you, as you see, we have a just test table. Later, we will go over functions and triggers and let's go to authentication. Here we can see all the users that we have. Also, we can configure how the authentication is going to work. We can change authentication emails that are being sent. So we have invite user, magic link, change email address, reset password, re-authentication, stuff like that. If we go to storage, here we will be able to see all the files that are uploaded. And here in the edge functions, we can create custom API endpoints, which will conduct some special custom functionality that you want. It's important to note that this is not some no-code, low-code solution. So when you create custom edge functions, you will need to write your code. So you will need to write JavaScript. And we have the real time so we can enable real time for database tables. This is good, for example, for chat applications. What's important about Superbase is actually API docs. So whenever you create a table, it is going to be generated here. So here you will be able to see the code that you can use to call API points. For example, here we have test table and on the right side, you can see how you can read from the table. These are all the variations how you can uh, read from the table. Here is how you can read all rows uh, with pagination, then filtering. Here is how you insert, here, here how you insert many rows, matching rows, update matching row, delete, subscribe, this for real time, and stuff like that. All of this code is actually a wrapper for API calls. So when you create a table, Superbase automatically creates crude API endpoints. So you have pre-built functions for inserting to the table, reading from the table, updating the table and deleting the record from the table. So here you are going to have your tables and here if you go to user management, you can see the code that you can use for user authentication. So this is how you sign up users, this is how you users log in and we have then uh, various different options to use with Superbase authentication. And now let's go to Xano to compare some things. Uh, we just talked about authentication. So here we have a portion of authentication and then uh, here we have a documentation. I mean, how do you call APIs of the authentication of the users table? If we go to database, if we go to tables, uh, here we have schema public. Here are all the tables that we create and uh, here we have auth and here is uh, users table you can see it here and here all the users are going to be stored and let's go to Xano so here is the dashboard uh, on the left side we have database we have API we have tasks we have library and settings so the most important things are like few of these here so if you go to the database here I created a few tables and as in Superbase when you create a table you can create crude API endpoints and let's try that we add a table test table and here you can check how to create crude API endpoints API group so this is basically a folder for the your crude API endpoint so I'm going to create a new group I'm going to call it test group and then add table so here we have the table and we can add columns for example let's say it's text add column 
I'm not going to add other columns and configure the table. We, we are going to check the API. So here we have test group. If we go here, you can see we have everything that we need. So we can read from the table. We can insert to the table. We can delete a row from the table. We can read a row from the table and we can update a row in, in the table. So we have everything prepared for us. If we click post, here we have a no code logic of that API endpoint. So if we go to API and then test group, and if we want to create a custom API endpoint for some special custom functionality, we can click here, add API endpoint. We can click custom endpoint. We can name it however we want. Test API endpoint, for example. And then are we doing get post delete put patch or head? So let's say we do post. And here it asks us uh, if this is something that only authenticated users do or no. So let's say no for, no for now. Save. And this is the same what you do with edge functions in Superbase. But in Superbase you will need to write custom code for custom API endpoints. And here you don't need to do that. We have this no code interface. We can add input. So what is going to be input into this API endpoint? For example, we have text that is name. So the API endpoint is receiving name and then uh, in function stack, we can determine what we are going to do with the input data. And if we click add function, here we have some programming logic like creating variable for each loop, conditional queries, external API request and stuff like that. And here we have uh, all the functions grouped into the folders, database requests. You scroll here and find the one that you want. Let's say we want to edit. We click test table and then we configure here what we want to edit. Let's close this. So here you can add multiple of these functions, whatever it's needed uh, in your case. For example, let's add for each loop. Let's add, let's create a variable. And then the API point is going to return a response. And here in tasks, you can create things such as cron jobs, for example, or some background processing. For example, if you want each Tuesday to send an email to your users, so here is where you are going to do that. And in library, you can do various things, but uh, let's say we have, uh, so we have functions here. You can create reusable functions to use it across all the API points. Let's go to the dashboard. And if we click settings here, as in Superbase, we can also enable a uh, real time. Currently it's in beta, but that will be soon ready for usage. And what we have also here is triggers. So what are triggers? Uh, triggers are functions that are going to trigger after some event. And that event could be, for example, when you insert user to the table, trigger this function, for example. Or if you delete user for, from the table, trigger the function. For example, if user deletes his account, we trigger an email to be sent out to the user. So we notify him that he deleted his account and it can't be restored and stuff like that. The same thing you can do in Superbase and this is uh, that's here in database uh, and triggers. Here you create a function. Also, this is not no code, while in Zano it's no code. When you create a function, uh, you create a trigger for that function and that's how it works. So both platforms have very similar functionalities, but the main difference is that Superbase is coding platform, while Zano is no code platform. Superbase is very good because it gives you the infrastructure, it gives you hosting, it gives you database, it gives you pre-made aut authentication, it creates crude API endpoints for each table you create. So it's not like you are doing a project from scratch. Actually, you have a lot of features already pre-built in Superbase. In Zano, you have all of that, and on top of that, you have no code builder. So you can create custom functionality for your apps using no code. That's it for this video. See you in the next.